become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash golden era bookworm for hard to find books, scans of rare photos and articles on the golden era of bodybuilding. Hi everybody, Golden Era Bookworm here. Today I would like to talk about legendary silver era bodybuilder Clarence Ross, whom at the time was nicknamed the King of Bodybuilders. Many of you may have seen my previous videos and understand that Clarence built his physique using full body routines, using poundages that would floor any bodybuilder of today. However, most people probably don't realize how strong Clarence Ross truly was. So much so that one could almost consider him at least a weightlifter, if not a strongman. And this is what the focus of today's video is about. So let's have a look at this great silver era legend, as well as the practices that made his strength and physique so legendary. So Clarence Ross was actually one of the most successful silver era bodybuilders at the um, time of the 40s to the 50s. He, win a, he won a slew of titles as he burst into the scene in the mid 40s, winning firstly the AAU Mr. America in 1945. I've covered a video on this linked above. After this, he followed up with a professional Mr. America win in 1946, the Mr. USA competition in 1948, and the IFBB North America Championship in 1949. With all these titles under his belt in the um, late 40s, uh, he basically won himself the title, the King of Bodybuilders. And after a successful comeback in the mid-50s, uh, where he claimed first in the tour category of the Mr. Universe, the NABA pro, uh, professional Mr. Universe, um, after that he retired. Here's an awesome shot of Clarence Ross in, in a classic pose. I think this is a javelin pose, a phenomenal pose um, here by Clarence Ross. At his peak... His uh, best measurements are as follows, weighing at about 90 to 93 kilos, so over 200 pounds, basically 205 to 215 pounds was his uh, competition weight. And standing at 5 foot 10, that's quite a big poundage for a man. Um, he was able to develop 19 inch arms and he's quite famous for his uh, biceps, uh, especially the single biceps pose, which he uh, uh, is often shown in many of waiters. Uh, covers in his magazines. He was also famous for his very large chest development and of course possessing a very small waist of only 29 inches. A very aesthetically pleasing physique. Now we come to the focus of today's videos which is um, really the strength of Clarence Ross. Really one could classify as, as a strong man. I mean the man was an absolute beast. His best poundages are listed. Um, his bench press was 420 pounds and um, he would you know normally use 300 pounds plus for reps for his sets um, the incline press uh, which he actually just like Steve Reeves enjoyed performing using dumbbells he would actually handle way more than Steve Reeves um, using 140 pound dumbbells that's that's an enormous enormous amount of weight the cheat curl uh, he would uh, he got up to actually 200 pounds times 10 reps on the on the uh, cheat curl and when asked to do a strict curl, he uh, performed 185 pounds, which was at the time five pounds less than the world record. I mean, we are talking about a really seriously strong man here, Clarence Ross, as a bodybuilder. Now, Clarence Ross hasn't necessarily trained as a strong man, but um, many consider him at the time the strongest bodybuilder of the silver era. His squat was 400 pounds plus for reps. He would be able to clean two 140 pound dumbbells without a problem. Some said that he even did it without warming up. And his strict press, strict press with 275 pounds, unbelievable strength possessed by Clarence Ross. So besides the bodybuilding exercises that Clarence Ross was famous for using these heavy poundages on, um, a lot of people don't actually understand that uh, Clarence Ross is actually a big believer in the weightlifting uh, exercises as well as he practiced a lot of odd lifts and what would be considered nowadays as feats of strength and that's what we're going to now focus on for example we can see in figure one here um, a exercise that Clarence Ross advocated for gaining strength was the push press where you basically as you can see his, his legs are 
bent. So you clean the weight up to your shoulders and you bend your legs and, and drive the bar up by the assistance of your leg drive. The push press is commonly used by Olympic weightlifters. Uh, another favorite of him, of course, another favorite of him and of Olympic weightlifters was the repetition snatch as shown in figure two. Here are another two exercises advocated by Clarence Ross and these are also heavily used by Olympic weightlifters. That is the repetition clean to the shoulders. Notice that as Clarence Ross cleans the bar up to his shoulders, he catches the bar using a split squat stance. Very, very, um, you very well used by Olympic weightlifters. And um, another favorite of his, as I mentioned, was the repetition jerk shown in figure four. So we've seen four exercises right now that Clarence Ross advocated, and these are commonly used by Olympic weightlifters. Um, so this is kind of why um, it is well known that Clarence Ross wasn't just a strong bodybuilder, but he actually developed a lot of his strength using weightlifting. But further to this, he actually really enjoyed doing some of these odd lifts, which as I mentioned earlier, could be almost considered as strongman feats nowadays. And shown in figure five here is the one, or the one arm clean to the shoulder. Now it may look like he's using his other arm to balance the bar, but he's actually got it on his chest. So he actually just drives, he pulls the bar up and drives it up to his shoulders um, using one arm. Now it's hard enough to do that with a dumbbell, but could you imagine the amount of grip strength and just overall brute strength required to, to clean a barbell? I mean, the balance required just for that alone and the grip strength is incredible because the barber would be moving all over the place. So to, to do that, a one arm clean of a barbell to the shoulder would be absolutely incredible. Now, two final exercises that were recommended by Clarence Ross include the one arm push press and the continental lift to the shoulders. Now, on figure six, we can see the push press, the one arm push press, which is basically a continuation of the one arm clean to the shoulder. Once you've cleaned the barbell to the shoulder, you would actually have to require, you'd be required to actually press that overhead, which requires incredible stability of the whole body of the torso, as well as incredible strength of one shoulder. Definitely a strongman stunt. Um, another strongman stunt is, is the continental lift to the shoulders, where he actually, back in the silver era, uh, you would lift a heavy barbell up, basically almost deadlifting it up to your waist. And you would have to perform this using a thick leather belt. And you would actually hook the bar onto the belt, as you can see Clarence Ross doing. Um, once you've managed to lift it up past your hips onto that belt, you would kind of climb under it and and get it up to your shoulders. So it, it, it is basically an almost like a a um, an anyhow lift and anyhow lift meant to lift it any way possible and this is just as uh, Clarence Ross put it the king of all lifts according to to his um, to his opinion because it literally just requires absolute brute strength it is not about doing um, the lift in any clean and precise fashion. It is just about using all the almighty strength that you have and lifting it up to your shoulders. That is the continental to the shoulders. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video on the powerful, the strong and the almighty Clarence Ross, the king of bodybuilders. As you have seen, not only was Clarence Ross a very strong bodybuilder, but he used weightlifting and these strongman stunts to develop his awesome physique. Um, he really did possess tremendous power and it really does serve as a lesson to us nowadays. Um, a lot of us have, I guess, lost, I, I would say have lost the way to, to really developing true strength. The Silver Era bodybuilders were as powerful and huge as they were because they didn't rely just on bodybuilding. They relied on other practices such as weightlifting and doing these odd lifts. Um, so it's something to think about and maybe incorporate in your own workouts. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't to the Golden Era Bookworm, and leave me your comments. Thank you again for watching. If you'd like to support my work, please donate via PayPal or become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash Golden Era Bookworm, where I actually download um, 
many sorry upload many of these articles uh, which I base my videos on as well as photos and hard to find books you can also go to my website uh, golden era bookworm forward slash website for courses from the bronze and silver era that's it for me this is the golden era bookworm bye for now visit golden era bookworm forward slash website for courses from the bronze and silver era of bodybuilding